Okay, so, uh, yeah, this slide, I can't be able to bleach it uh, because I don't know why, like, every time I try to do it, it's just, uh, a very chaotic. So, uh, I totally suggest that just make sure you use this, uh, no printing. <laughs> um, yeah, you just have to read it, I think, uh, digitally only for this. I think chapter 9 and then 10, 11, yeah, three of them. It's just very difficult to bleach. And I just so so tired of trying to trying to fix all of that. It's very very bad way of designing the uh, presentation. Oh my gosh! So anyways, so let's get into location. Yeah, controls. Um, we're gonna hit concentricity, symmetry, and then position. Very important. All right. So concentricity looks like this. Yeah, symmetry of course, and then your position symbols. For your geometric tolerance controls all right then the very first one is um, we will get into concentricity yeah so co um, coaxiality again um we always you know deal with the size without the size very difficult for us to measure or verify anything anyway So when we get into concentricity, we're just looking at uh, circles, yeah? Um, and if you have like uh, the axis, yeah, uh, the, if they coincide axis on the center point, yeah, uh, of your datum feature with, um, with another circle, then we call it concentricity, yeah? Uh, so let's take a look at it. it would, it's a little better if you see it, yeah, we're in a diagram. Otherwise, it's very difficult for you to just imagine concentricity because you got to know like which one is the datum and then which one is uh, the feature or feature size that you are uh, studying. So again, the same thing, your RFS is your regardless of feature size, your control must always apply yeah, regardless of your feature size. So that's in the, in, in the name. Uh, Meaning like it doesn't matter what size there is, you have to have that control. Of course, all of your surface variation measurements, they're as always, yeah, independent. And uh, everything that we try to verify got to be within the specified tolerance, yeah? So the rules doesn't really change. It's just the symbol and what we are uh, measuring or verifying changes, yeah? So here, the first location tolerance is on concentricity and uh, this control is a uh, co-axiality okay co mean that we're dealing with two okay so co mean uh, one of them is a uh, is a common thing so co-axial control for concentricity we got to you you have to verify yeah from the surface element so is always applies your RFS, which is always applies your regardless of yeah, feature size. Okay, here we go. Your yeah, very first example, your datum right here, plane, and then here, yeah, your primary datum right there, putting in. I'll look at the cursor right there, and then of course uh, this, you're dealing with the diameter for tolerance zone. Yeah, we have another, which is your size tolerance. Getting into yeah. Your symbol is correct. We're dealing with the concentric city, so that's the concentric. Yeah, you're sharing. Look at that. See that axis is the same. Yeah, center point is the same. So when you look at the view, two views, front and side, you can be able to see this going in. Yeah, um, that's the difficulty in concentricity to be able to see. But don't worry about it. We're gonna. Uh, show all the zones so now for zones instead of drawing like this we're going to draw exaggerated version where you can see all the imperfection of elements on that surface which is this guy yeah and we have the the uh, same center yeah and we're going to find our median point so let's put in and put our zone right there yeah so which is this guy 0 0.2 zone clearly you can see and this is our uh, mid okay axis right there which is this guy right here two different views okay and you are dealing with this yeah to measure okay so uh, 
the since we have done uh, so many uh, tolerances before, uh, I'm gonna go a little bit faster, yeah, because we're seeing this again, again, the same thing, the same rule. Um, we establish our median points. So let's get into our decision application guide, concentricity control, yeah. So very first one, we're gonna take a look at. If that control that we have in this case is concentricity is applied to a feature of size or not. Yes or no? Yes. Look at the modifier. You don't have the modifier for concentricity, yeah? That's the difference with your orientation still. Now look at your data. You have a data, it's acceptable. We're not applying to the feature of size, so it's not acceptable because you have to, yeah? Not applying, uh, so let's go back to one step down. Control apply to your feature of that, yes. Look at your modifier, used or not, if you use it, unacceptable, yeah? Because you don't need to use it for feature of size. If no, we're gonna look at the data. If you don't have the data, unacceptable. So the flow chart is a little bit different from our orientation, yeah? Because this is location. Don't forget the foundation of it orientation oriented in the space location where is it okay uh, try to understand all the differences between the orientation and then look yeah these slides are pretty bad I've been doing nothing but you know so I'm fixing it I, I don't think yes whoever did editorial whatever it's just not right uh, too many spelling mistakes and all that so anyway so this is the entire yeah uh, concentricity control uh, flow chart when you uh, study, uh, make sure you get it. I'm not going to ask you know, the whole thing. If you can uh, go with the symbols, of course, it will appear in true or false or things like that. But I'll try all my best to just, uh, you know, like uh, pay, pay attention to your problems, yeah, textbook problems. So that will do it for your test, if it makes sense. Okay, so let's go into size features. Um, for position tolerances, we uh, use um, the concentricity here. Yeah? Uh, since we're dealing with the concentricity, of course, you will, uh, your control is on uh, cylindrical, yeah? So, uh, it's, it's, uh, kind of, I would say like holes, right? In your um, parts. And also, of course, uh, when you draw, it's like the suckles, yeah? Because um, you're dealing with the concentricity of your cylinders and at that time we can also use a position you know which is this little guy right there so position tolerances which is this guy um, we can use that as control for your concentricity okay so don't uh, mix up with the very first example because the first example has a concentr concentricity symbol yeah, here uh, is a position symbol, meaning like we can use the position tolerance to control concentricity, okay, of all of our yeah, uh, circular or spherical features. Yeah? The only difference is, of course, that we can be able to uh, use your uh, maximum material condition stuff. Yeah, if you use just a regular location for location tolerance for concentricity, you can't do the uh, material modifiers, okay? And that's a major point that you need to know. All right, then let's get into uh, your um, axis. Yeah? So here, the data axis is right here. So we're gonna stick it right there on this circle in this example, yeah? And we'll follow our position tolerance with that. We have our max material condition and we're dealing with diameter yeah, because of your cylinder right there and uh, your primary yeah, data yeah, references right here yeah, telling you single which is your primary data reference but you have only one anyway so you need three touch points and then your max material condition yeah, for the tolerance zone as well as for the data here yeah? 
And here we have we have a hat. Uh, this is a pin. Yeah. When you look at it, just like we draw it really big, so a pin looks like very big. Yeah. So you have your hat, and also you have your body right here. So that uh, cylindrical tolerance zone is zero point two millimeter. Yeah. And of course, it is at your max material condition, meaning that this diameter is at its least. Okay. So at MMC. You're gonna have uh, the diameter, okay? Your controlling datum feature is going to be 12 you know, a millimeter for that. Because the set is so right here, see that? Yeah, you can see right there. So that's it, which is this part. Of course, your head is this, which is this. You know? uh, make sure you're okay with all the views. So your hat is going to have, your max is going to be 25 yeah, millimeter. Of course, this is your tolerance. You can go up and down from there. And your lease is going to be, um, go with your lower, yeah, lower limit. So 11.8 for the least. And then of course, uh, for the hat is going to be 24.5. So that's uh, pretty easy you know, for you to be able to uh, calculate it. You know? Of course, your gauge is going to uh, uh, take a look at our variations you know, in that intolerance zone. You have two feature, and they co, uh, co uh, sharing the center, so therefore co exit alignment. Yeah, it's going to go from zero point four five yeah millimeter. So that's uh, in diameter is about 0 0.9, okay? And we're dealing with, of course, as your LMC, which is uh, your uh, least material condition. Uh, don't forget how we, yeah, let's go away from, moving away from the MMC, um, each unit, yeah? But you can go, the maximum is going to be um, in these limits that we just mentioned, yeah, 12, 25, and then 24.5 and 11.8 for each feature right there for your uh, body and then your hat of that pin. Okay, then we will get into a summary of your size features. The next one is your um, uh, symmetry, sorry, but uh, I'm so sleepy. Sorry, okay, so we're getting into the not summary, sim symmetry, okay, symmetry of your size features, uh, which is your next uh, location tolerance. I think I need to rest, I'm so tired. Okay, so we get into symmetry. A symmetry is, all right, um, it's pretty much like your concentricity. Because concentrate, we have like a two, yeah, two different uh, circles that share the same center. For symmetry, you have uh, two different, yeah, a, a side of your, your part sharing the same features, yeah. So when you look at it here, see like this, yeah, uh, the feature of this part, look at this, this side and that side, exact same thing, kind of like a mirroring, yeah. Uh, to each other. So that center plane right here is um, you can you can get uh, which is right here at the center where uh, you know each side is going to reflect in the exact you know same size and the shape. And then we're going to bring our feature control frame right here. Yeah, uh, you can see. Look at this symmetry symbol. Meaning like, hey, we're dealing with the symmetry for this part and we're going to have a control of 0 0.4 tolerance yeah, for that symmetry, meaning like you can vary in that zone. Yeah? So now we're going to go a little bit faster. So here, exaggerate it, drawing it. You can see, okay? So this is your uh, all the medium points right in there, showing you this little red dots right there. So those are your medium points. And... Uh, and they oppose each other elements, you know, uh, on that groove right there that we just draw, you know? And of course, the measurements across the opening and the perpendicular to that center plane right there, you know? See that little shape here, shapes here, you know? 
we can see the imperfections here on the surface. Mainly, line, this is exaggerated, you know, version of oh, that. That is a perfect way of drawing. This is like going in exaggeration on a diagram, exaggerated diagram. So we will deal with our 0.4 white tolerance zone, you yeah? know? As long as you stay in that zone, it doesn't matter how your medium points go up and down, you're okay, you yeah? Your datum plane is your A, so just this one, yeah? Center plane is your datum feature A. And we can verify, you yeah, by using a gauge. All right, let's get into our flow chart. The same thing, we're gonna take a look at the feature of size. If that's yes, look at the modifier. If that's no, look at the symmetry, you know, uh, date and reference. If that is yes, it is acceptable, you yeah? know? All right, second one, we'll take a look at the control applied to the feature of size. If no, not acceptable, because symmetry cannot apply to features. You know? It's always applied to the feature of size again. And then uh, you check your modifier. If your symmetry, uh, yes, uh, your control is uh, applied to the feature of size. When we look at the modifier, if that's yes, it's unacceptable. We look at the modifier, you know, and it's no, we go and check your symmetry data. No, we go to unacceptable. Then we check the feature of size modifier symmetry if that symmetry uh, datum reference is there then acceptable yeah you look at the control feature size yes and you can look yeah a modifier you can also go back yeah in the reverse direction if that's no you can go this way if that's no you can go that way yeah? it's a little bit um difficult a flow chart to draw but you, I only want you to uh, study the control frame, which is this guy, you know, and then you go e each one of them. The only thing that's not showing is a decision between the feature of his eyes and the feature, you yeah? know, and the rest of them are you can quickly read out of the frame, you know, because they're like just when you look at it, you know that there is a, a modifier or not, you know that there is a tolerance or not, you know that there is a data you know, reference frame uh, which is your data here in this case is a right here data reference is in there or not i would suggest that just practice with a diagram you know instead of the uh, reading the text reading the text is not going to help you because it's really bulky you know and you have to try to remember an international student uh, yes uh, it's going to have a little more issue because it's it's really bulky you know, in explanation so just let, listen to the lecture and go with the diagram is, uh, I think, it's easier uh, for you to be able to get it. And we come in here, yeah? So here, symmetry. Now we're gonna use a position just like we did before. Position tolerance is gonna control your symmetry, yeah? Even though in the diagram showing the symmetry, we're using the position tolerance to control that. Since we do the position tolerance, cause we have a size right, limit right here, lower, upper right there, max, I mean, and then you're gonna go with 0 0.2. You can move away from your max, you know, 0.2 going down each, okay? All the way until you reach uh, 8.4 is your max, you yeah? The same thing for this, you yeah? know, size is uh, 20 all the way to 20.5. You have two different sizes for this uh, part, from here to here and from here to here, yeah? So therefore, you have the two limits right there two different sets of limit, I should say, and then your datum D and your datum E. So you have primary and then your secondary data, three points and then two points, you know, touch points to identify that plane. And uh, your secondary data also have a, a maximum material, yeah? so we'll go max and then your LMC is right there. Your increment is 0 0.2, moving away from MMC until you reach you know, LMC. You have already practiced with the table, you know, from the previous lecture. And make sure you study. If you don't study, uh, whatever I'm saying is going to be like so new to you. You have to read. You know, these things are not a joke, by the way. Okay, concept. We're going to review location tolerance. We hit it three: concentricity, position, and then your symmetry. Know that all your location tolerances, you know can only be applied to the feature size. 
Your symmetry and concentricity, geometric tolerances, can only be applied to your RFS, yeah? Position may be applied to your RFS, yeah? You can also apply the position to MMC or LMC, yeah? So when you have a position, you can also control the concentricity and symmetry. Don't forget that. So the position tolerance you can use, yeah? So this is what it's saying. Out of this three location tolerances, we can use uh, the uh, position of uh, feature control frame to control symmetry and concentricity. Uh, position yeah, tolerances is less expensive and easier to verify than your concentricity or your symmetry. Yeah? Of course, your position uh, tolerances require your data reference. All right, so ASME, your standard, we're going to follow ASME Y14.5 and 1994. Okay, then we'll go into position tolerance. Then we'll take a look at, um, we use it, yeah, to uh, locate, to see where your size features relative to your datum or multiple datums are. So the only thing is uh, multiple datums, yeah, so let's say a uh, first example here. Uh, here is your part, and we have a one, two, three, four. Yeah, so that's a four, and this is a control. The, sorry, the bigger circle is controlled by this control frame, and the little circle is controlled by that control frame right here. Yeah, and uh, I think there's some stuff in here I can see. No, no, no. But anyway, so this is uh, actually uh, just showing you, yeah, the uh, uh, tolerance right there. So ten, and then that's uh, four times of this little circle with the diameter three and then it's your tolerance range right there yeah uh, the position is going to be controlled by zero two so why do you have two uh, tolerances because one is for the feature which is this you know the other one is where that feature is when we talk about the position you know location where 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 these features are on that part is called location you know so don't don't get confused one by getting a two tolerance because you need it. One is for the feature size, we call it size tolerance. The other one is where they are, you know, in this. The uh, last chapter was on where, how are they oriented. This chapter is on where are they located, okay, in your part. Okay, so the, uh, uh, they're just a the size here, yeah, from here to here, this is showing you, okay. Now we'll get into, um, you're going to draw, yeah, this is center line right there and draw like straight out of it, out of your part right there. And of course we draw because you have a one, two, three, four centers for that, so we draw the center line out of it. And here the same thing, you know, center line got to draw out of the part. And here you have your cylinders right there. And then we're going to identify, you yeah, know, so our data is right here, so the center planes. B and then here is your data center plane, okay. C and your data, you know, in your site view, you can see right there, you know, that's A. You can see this because you're looking at the front, you know, that's the site, so that's the in the back, you yeah? So now we have a three primary, secondary, and the tertiary data, you know, data uh, reference right there, E, B, and C. And your position, you know, tolerance, that's the max here, position tolerance as a max material condition right there, okay? Your diameter and diameter tolerance, your diameter of this bigger circle and your diameter tolerance. All right, so then we'll get into it for another second part. Do the same thing, your control frame here, another control frame here for that slot, two of them. So there you see the little two X right there. And then here, that's your diameter and then go in there. Yeah, each one of them. Here, you have two views. So you can be able to see where your data reference primary is going to be, which is here. You know? You're looking at that part, your front view, and then your side view here. You know? These are, don't worry about it, that's just not blank. It's just showing you the basic dimensions, but they're like, a, you know, like showing you uh, each one of them here on this example. But they don't have the tolerance, yeah. We'll just go with the feature, uh, feature because of course you don't need to locate these uh, dimensions, because we're dealing with the location tolerance. So therefore, we're just uh, concentrating on the feature, yeah, which is this, this, and that, and uh, uh, trying to find where 
they are located on the part yeah okay then we'll review the location tolerance so first thing is uh, you got to understand about your coaxiality, yeah? cylinder features, the location, we deal with the feature sites. Um, we think about whether they are individual or collective yeah? in data, I mean like they, if they come like one cycle or uh, three different, uh, three, uh, three same cycle yeah? of the same uh, diameter, things like that. And then we look at them. Uh, with respect to the data, you know, data plane that we identify in our parts. And of course, we, we just uh, saw ABC, you know, three different uh, datums uh, in the previous two examples. So that's what we talked about multiple datums, yeah. And then we come to location or orientation. Then we think about our concentricity you know, and symmetry of your size features. All right, tolerances of position. So let's take a look at it. Again, when we talk about the tolerances of position, our concentration is on location of our features, you know? And that tolerance, we can use it, you know, to simulate the mating part relationships. Uh, mating parts are really important in our industry, you know, because uh, you need to fit to each other, otherwise they won't do. In manufacturing, you have a lot of issue. Then you're gonna modify it. Uh, sorry, we're gonna take a look at our modifiers. Your MMC, LMC. You can quickly uh, locate MMC and LMC and size tolerances given to you in each part. You know, of course. Uh, and tolerance position is going to provide flexibility for verification because you can use it because your data and references are in there for your measurement purposes. Yeah, simulation, we can do that too virtually, digitally, yeah. And we use it to control the features, you know, uh, for their co-axial relationship between these uh, features on the part. And then also your your tolerance of position is going to provide your symmetry, uh, symmetrical controls, yeah features relative to the center plane. Every time you think about the symmetry, you have the center plane. Without the center plane, you can't get the symmetry because they are situated you know, on each side of that plane. And then, of course, your position tolerance is going to provide your margins you know, for your cost saving, meaning like you can deviate, you can make errors in that tolerance. So, all right, then we will get into coordinate tolerance and we will compare that to our position tolerance, yeah? All right, so first we'll start with coordinate location tolerance. Sorry, uh, this, uh, uh, this course is a very, very, very intensive, yeah? Because you have too many um, stuff <laughs> for you to be able to take it. Like, I did warn you in the beginning, yeah, you have uh, too much material in this course, so just be patient, be very, very patient. All right, um, so coordinate tolerancing, we are going to locate a hole, yeah? So you're going to use our standard dimension. Your standard dimensions are always with your tolerance. Your tolerance, you can identify with the plus and minus stuff, yeah? And we'll locate the intersecting uh, center planes. And so one here, one there, they're intersecting at that point, yeah? Uh, so you can see that we can just we just locate it, you know, this uh, center line or axis of a feature, you know. In this case, it's of course we're dealing with a hole because it said it so here in the example, you know. So here's your plane plane. There are uh, cross section right there is showing you a point, and that is your center point. And then now we are going to put in our dimension and our tolerance. We know that that's the tolerance because you see plus and minus right there for you, you know. And uh, we call it coordinate tolerancing. So our tolerance is going to, uh, you know, provide the range, yeah, you know, for that hole right there, yeah. So here we go, oh, point seven five five, and this side is going to be point seven four five, yeah. And we calculate that, of course, from this, yeah, you know, middle. So because the middle one is a point seven five zero plus or minus, we can go uh, point zero zero five on and off, yeah. You know? So. Uh, 
And this one also have its own, yeah, going from point uh, 750, which is this, yeah, plus or minus. See that? And then, sorry, plus, so which is this? And or minus is this, yeah. I'm just uh, pointing this out for uh, our uh, tolerance here, yeah. So that's your dimension, that's your tolerance, that's our calculation to represent. Of course, this is very exaggerated, so you can be able to see. It's not in, in real life, this is very tiny, by the way. Yeah? But for drawing, uh, for you to see the zone, it's too big. Yeah? Then we do the same thing, of course, yeah? uh, for this side. Yeah? So you have a 24 plus minus point zero zero five. We go up one and down one of that yeah? unit. Okay, so we come down here. And here we go, your tolerance zone. In the case, now we're going to measure exactly 10, 1,000. Yeah, on any of your vertical, yeah, or your horizontal coordinate. And we're gonna do it all the way, yeah, to uh, go from the minimum all the way to the uh, maximum. This is just showing you how the distance increases, yeah, that way. Why is it like uh, showing you like going out in different ways? This, this hole has a different orientation, yeah? We are looking at uh, like front view and it's going with orientations like that. Yes? Okay. Uh, why do we do the coordinate tolerance? We just want to see it in three dimensional you know, space. So uh, when you deal with the 3D or three dimensional rectangular tolerance zone, so you have your width, your height, yeah? your depth. Dimension meaning it is uh, you have some sort of a body, you know, your width, your height, and, and shape is going to give you kind of like a big box that you can see, you know, the feature inside of that. Yeah, and uh, uh, don't stress uh, too much on it. Just like I uh, try to tell you uh, why we do this uh, coordinate, you know, uh, tolerance. So uh, it's easier for us to be able to uh, uh, control, you know, control uh, the measurements for verifications. Because as you know, because you always need to have like a to uh, you know dimension for your location features, um, you you always need like additional evaluation, you know, um, because a lot of errors can happen for to prevent or protect you know the worst case scenario, uh, in uh, measurements. So it's a good thing uh, that we do, you know, instead of just a general uh, tolerance to. Uh, to study this, the same part with the coordinate tolerance so we can see all the errors in it. Okay, then we we'll get into our position, location, oh, tolerancing. So this is another method right here that we do. So here we're gonna, uh, this is the same same example that we did, yeah? So if we go with the tolerance variation like uh, plus or minus 0 0.007 on this diagonal one, right? And that's uh, here in this example, of course, is he uh, uh, said it is, it's going to be a worse uh, case. Then uh, your tolerance of plus or minus, you know, lower than that, which is 0 0.005 for the coordinate locating dimensions, you know, uh, you can specify that. All of which is going to be like uh, compounds, you know, the tolerance analysis. So from the center, it's going to allow, you know, point, uh, zero zero 007, you know, uh, we will use instead of this uh, regular coordinate um, rectangular zone, we will use a cylinder. So we can see it a little bit better for that diagonal or variation. Yeah? So here we are. So we'll draw this other circle right there at the point of our rectangular yeah, coordinate zone. So we can see um, we can see this diagonal right there. See that? Yeah? So that axis is uh, permitted to vary. Yeah? from its true position by equal amount in all direction. So by doing that, uh, we can be able to accept, you know, accept the uh, excluded or excluded uh, values because we now expanded the area, yeah. So otherwise, if you move this, it will go out, you know, so you get the worst case scenario. But right now by uh, using this different boundaries, you know, um, by doing this a silent, you know, cylindry, uh, cylindrical um, a tolerance boundary and like this rectangular you know, coordinate tolerance so it will include all of 
the deviations, you know, so uh, to solve this uh, problem of this uh, diagonal, you know, issue right there. Okay. Okay, so now we consider all of this, so therefore uh, you have your tolerances increase about 57% of it, yeah? So because if you look at all of this area, you know, don't worry about the uh, uh, calculation, yeah? I just like combine all of this purple ones, yeah? So that's an increase of 57% from this original area, rectangular one, yeah? It looks a little bit square to me, right? I just try and play with the numbers to uh, solve the issue, you know, of the work. So right now you can see all of these little, little points right there, yeah, for your variation. So this 57% uh, increase, so usable tolerance, you know, your shaded areas, you can use them. And that's definitely, you know, derived from your geometric tolerance right here, which was yeah, not acceptable in coordinate, you know, tolerancing situation. But by doing a cylindrical uh, area increase like that, this you can be able to solve you know, um, that way. So by doing it, what can we do? We can uh, save you know, a lot of the manufacturing forces uh, by increasing the tolerance you know, like that. So you can make a mistake right in there. And it's also acceptable uh, because it doesn't really matter because you're, you're dealing with a hole anyway. You know? So it won't it won't hurt the uh, part as a whole, okay. Now we we'll get into true position geometric tolerance. True position we have already gone through one time. You know, your true size, true angle, you know, uh, true position. So that's uh, your exact or your perfect location of your point line or plane. So usually uh, we're looking at the center of the size feature, you know, and that's got to be in relationship, of course, in this chapter with your datum reference frame, you know, or the uh, uh, feature size, feature size. True position tolerance is a little bit different from your true position, but that's what we're dealing with the tolerance, so that's a specified area or zone, you know, um, so you have center or axis in there, you know, in that area or in that zone, or your center plane also in there. And that's definitely permitted because that area is a tolerance zone, you know, so therefore these things are permitted to vary, you know, uh, from your theoretical exact or perfect or true position, you know. Okay, let's just go over all of your definition again. Of course, your feature resides, you know, uh, are controlled by MMC or LMC, so your tolerance is also defined by your VC, which is your virtual condition, you know, boundary. Um, this is just a constant review going back to our basic dimension and application. Okay, so when we deal with the basic dimension you know, in your drawings, you know, um, a long time ago they used like, oh, this is basic, and you write like BASIC or BSC, but we don't do that anymore. You know? In different application, we just use a straight you know, number, which is your basic dimensions. Uh, instead of writing like that a long time ago, that's just a uh, deprecated. So we're using currently with this standard, your ASME Y 14.5M here, yeah? uh, 1994 is your 1994 version. Um, of course, uh, they also use your special you know, notes. So notes, uh, this example of that, this uh, telling you in this example, unless otherwise specified or and tolerance, you know, uh, dimensions are basic. So that way, you don't have to write each at each and every one of them, yeah. You know, when you uh, do annotation like that, you know, this, this is so complicated. Also, take a lot of space. So just get rid of it and go with just a number, yeah, you know, and then put it in the note. All right, position tolerancing. These are just uh, we're repeating our rules, you know. So kind of like a review for you. So your true position tolerance, you you. They may be applied, you know, at maximum your MMC or your LMC or your RFS. Yeah, we have already done this in our previous uh, earlier chapters. So um, that's your uh, rule number two. Of course, uh, otherwise, uh, you're going to have all the specified uh, whatever note. If you don't have any kind of uh, specification, then just use the rule number two. Your surface and your axis. We're going to take a look at it. 
for our position boundary you know, theory. Surface elements. So when you deal with the surface elements for your true position theory, we're going to think like the theoretical boundary. You know, it's going to equal to your virtual condition of your feature, and then virtual condition is not uh, physical. Okay, so your theoretical boundary is going to equal to your uh, VC of your feature, and then located at your uh, feature's true position, meaning like it is at the right position. Okay, where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's just like the the wording is just confusing yeah, uh, for you. Uh, you know that we're dealing with the position, position of what, the position of the features, and they always come with a tolerance. Yeah? So your theoretical boundary is going to equal to the virtual condition of that feature. And then of course, it is going to locate it at the feature true position where it's supposed to be. Yeah? So you have two different things going on. One is the internal and the other one is the external feature. So for internal feature inside of your part, you know, the surface elements got to be within that, that boundary. For external feature, your surface element, okay, uh, don't need, uh, they mean like you can't have any of the surface element lying outside of the theoretical boundary, okay? Meaning it's got to be inside. So for internal feature, no surface element can be within the boundary, okay, within that boundary. Um, so let's take a look at uh, it with the diagram so you can see easy. Yeah? So we'll look at the internal feature starting with our holes. So our boundary theory, of course, the internal feature dealing the hole right there. You have a two plane right there showing you, you know, where the, uh, the location of your hole is. So it's going to be right here. You know, your basic, of course, dimension, something is right there, something's right there. It's just like this is just an empty box, but it's in your original presentation. You're going to have some number, but don't worry about it. It's just showing you there's a dimension right there. That's your basic dimension. You know? Look at the true position where that, you know, uh, who is going to be. So we'll point it out, hey, this is my true uh, position for that who. And that's, uh, of course, uh, you need a two you know, center plane to, uh, uh, to identify that who. And we are doing that, and these center planes come from your data you know, surfaces. So let's take a look at that. And then, of course, we're going to bring our scientific tolerance in for that. So your feature control you know, frame is going to be associated with the size dimension uh, of your whole. Yeah. Okay, all right. So I went out to drink some water. Um, so here is our true position, and then here is your cylindrical you know, tolerance zone. Then we got into and draw this, which is your theoretical you know, boundary, which we call the boundary theory. So when you draw this uh, theoretical boundary, uh, how do you calculate this distance you know, away from that center? Is we just uh, subtract you know, your position tolerance uh, from your uh, MMC. That's all. So you always have like a position tolerance, remember, in your uh, feature control frame, and then you have your maximum material condition tolerance. So uh, take that out yeah, of your uh, MMC for your whole size. That's going to give you your theoretical boundary. Yeah? So let's see. And so here is your uh, frame right there. And what we're going to do is uh, something seriously wrong with the slides. Like, yeah, I don't know why uh, he uh, left this out, yeah? So anyway, so there, there is a tolerance right here. That's where you have to take that out from this, you know, actual whole diameter. So I'm just going to uh, fill that in for uh, his slide, yeah? Uh, because I believe that you uh, you need. So right here, you're going to have a yeah, tolerance uh, value. And then you're going to have your MMC yeah, and your LMC. Uh, tolerance. So you have uh, one tolerance in the upper and a lower limit here. So what you got to do is you have to take you know, this out of this upper limit. So then you will get this uh, boundary theory, you know, which is the distance of from here to here right there. Okay. So the location of that whole axis, which is this guy right here, you know, 
it's going to vary within within the cylindrical tolerance limit which is your little yellow one all right and then of course uh, you don't have like the element of the whole surface yep of course uh, it, it has to be you know inside of the theoretical boundary which is this blue line okay and of course this one is your actual okay uh, diameter of your whole uh, diameter so now you can see your cylindrical tolerance zone yeah and then your true position which is right there and tolerance you can vary yeah that whole can vary in there uh all of that i don't know yeah i i checked the original you know uh slides and it's also blank like that so anyway uh, let's go back in here and um true position cylindrical tolerance and here is your actual whole diameter and here is our control frame yeah So the theoretical boundary, yeah, uh, should never be violated. Okay, so, so your uh, true position and sonic control has got to be right in there. And again, of course, you can change the position. Yeah, so here the position are right there. Here the position changes. Here the position changes. See that how uh, it's going? Yeah, around like that. Yeah, but it's always yeah your boundary theory. Yeah, it's telling the boundary, okay, uh, your theoretical boundary got to be always, yeah, inside of the actual whole surface, yeah, and you can see that in this example, okay. So here is your actual whole surface, that's your theoretical, yeah, so whole, actual whole uh, diameter is bigger than your theoretical boundary diameter, yeah. And so the this actual whole surface is always going to be outside of your theoretical boundary. All right, then we'll go into MCC boundary. We do the same thing, and we here is our true position, and here is our cylindrical tolerance zone, and here we're going to come up with our our theoretical. Don't forget how to calculate that. Yeah, minus your tolerance from your MMC, and then we're going to bring in our uh, theoretical boundary and then your uh, cylindrical zone and look at this you know, see that change our actual yeah, external diameter is now inside of your theoretical boundary so what is the difference from the original one regular one is mmc mean like we uh, want to have you know the maximum uh, material condition boundary so so your actual whole diameter got to go down so the material on your part is bigger yeah uh, it's going to be the uh, maximum size so all the material is going to be yes uh, around that hole so your whole size is smaller the smaller the hole size is the the, the more material you have on your part okay uh, try to understand mmc is not just a value it's your material of your part so if you drill a hole, if you drill a really big giant hole, you lose the material of the part. If you drill a small hole, you have the material, maximum material on your part, okay? And I want you to uh, get it, especially the international student, and make sure you will understand. I, I, I realize that you're getting backwards, and I don't know why. So if you, if you have like a doubt in your exam, uh, reverse it, <laughs> you will get it right. Okay, then uh, we're going to go into, yes, uh, don't worry about it. There is, a, I think he uh, intentionally left the uh, value out of it. There's a value here, and you also have a datum, yeah, to identify where is your datum references. But don't worry about it. Right now, I think we're just going to concentrate on the location of that, yeah. So we'll go down and see like, how it is moving, but still your actual, yeah, uh, the, your actual external diameter is going to be right inside of your theoretical boundary yeah so now we see the different changes in axis like that see so the location of your external feature axis is going to vary within your cylindrical tolerance limit but no elements of that surface yeah is going to be outside of your theoretical yeah so which is which is a reverse of our regular one so our regular boundary theory is a it's a different thing because your actual external diameter is outside of your theoretical boundary. When you deal with MMC boundary theory, your actual external yeah, diameter is inside of your theoretical boundary. So if you know that yeah, difference, uh, you're okay. Okay. 
Then we will get into the position tolerance, yeah, MMC axis boundary concept, which is um, your axis boundary concept is a little bit different because when we apply to the true position, yeah, so uh, we are dealing with this time, dealing with the where where your feature is and how that is oriented, yeah, according to your axis and of course the center plane. It's always have to be from axis and the center plane because again, uh, everything that you do with the feature with the parts for manufacturing depends on your measurements. Okay, measurements. So you can't measure without having your center plane or axis for any of the parts. You have feature. So that's why it's always going back to the same thing like that. Uh, again, just a, a, a take it, you know, simple because that we're dealing with the measurements, verifications, yeah. Okay, now let's see our axis boundary concept in, a, in the uh, diagram, yeah. So we'll see our true position identified with these two planes right there. And then of course uh, our control frame is right here, our tolerance our max material and here is our datum yeah and we are dealing with the position tolerance just by looking at it you should know okay so in this case we have point zero one zero your permitted cylindrical tolerance so we're going to put that in right there you know axis tolerance boundary so let's take a look at it compare with your true uh, position so here is the axis of your actual hole located within that tolerance zone now we're not dealing with the hole we're not dealing with the axis okay so the axis tolerance uh, boundary um so we go there and then we're gonna bring our your whole boundary you know which is this one you know and here is uh, this one is going to be yeah look at this very carefully yeah and that is your diameter yeah and now of course it's moving away uh, from it so you can see the sequence of slides I'm going to show you yeah, and you can see how the extreme offset location yeah, for the axis of the actual hole at your MMC. Okay? Again, the tolerance right now, we're dealing with the axis tolerance. So let's move around, see how it going around uh, from your this yeah, the tolerance diameter right there. Here we go again, yes. Go all the way down, down, and then come, yeah? Um, so you can see uh, each one of them uh, like that. It's going around this thing. So now we're concentrating. Don't worry about this. Because our boundary that we're concentrating is right here, yeah? So excess boundary right in there. And you can see this little center. You know, I want to show you again, starting from the beginning. See this right there, this little, yeah? So even though you can see uh, the surface elements are moving, what you want to see is how this little plus sign, see that? Uh, let me show you with the arrow so you can see it very clearly. Yeah? Uh, here is, see that little, yeah? Uh, see this? center yeah the center is going around on that axis of the so mean like the axis is moving away from the true uh, position of that axis you know for that hole and that's where you're seeing see look at that now it, it changes position to different thing from here yeah because most of the students will be looking at the the circumference of that uh, circle without sporting the center of it but we're dealing with the center because we're dealing with the axis, yeah? So there's a concept, boundary concept is on the center, okay? All right, so after that, we're going to come back and then we're going to look at that hole on a part, yeah? So here we have two little holes right there and your uh, dimension is going to be 0 0.250 for that in our control frame, yeah? okay? It's looking at the position of these holes and tolerance is going to be 0 0.010 at maximum material condition, meaning like we want the material on the part, you know? So we want to make that hole as uh, low as possible, diameter as low as possible. And uh, uh, of course the control is a 0 0.010 for that uh, position tolerance, you yeah? know? Your datum, we're going to measure from here. You can see this datum line 
line element because the view is different. Yeah, so your front view, your top view, and then your side view. When you do the side view, we can be able to see the datum right here, yeah, or on this surface, all right? So right here, you cannot be able to put this symbol on the front, yeah, plane. It's difficult to do it on the two-dimensional thing, so we flip the view, yeah, to the sides, and you can be able to put the datum plane like that, which is your primary data with the three, yeah? A, a, a contact point so if you bring the surface gauge on top of this yeah uh, surface so anyway so let's get into here now we have a little suction view for this uh, cylinder so two holes right there yeah and you can see the axis right here to uh, to look at the axis of boundary concept yeah and that is going to stay of course uh, within this uh, zone yeah a little zone line right there of course you can uh, swing like from here to you know uh, that side so we are just looking at the variation from the uh, yeah of uh, the center, yeah, the true position of that center axis. Of course, we're gonna go into review. We already talked about a position tolerance, and in this case, as well applied to the maximum material condition. We take a look at the internal yeah uh, feature, and we study with a whole yeah and a part. So your theoretical boundary, we did it the very first one. And you all you have to just uh, take subtraction, yeah. So that's the difference between your MMC of your whole diameter and your tolerance value. Just subtract it, and you're going to get your theoretical boundary. Once once you get your theoretical boundary of uh, for your uh, external feature, we're going to do the calculation again. So all you have to just add it, yeah. So MMC, the feature added to the position tolerance value, and you will get your theoretical boundary value. So that's how we calculate you know, the internal and also the external boundary like that. So whenever you have your feature size being controlled you know, by a position geometric tolerance, then the size form tolerance boundary, your rule number one yeah, is going to be overridden. Yeah? And we repeat this so again and again. When the rule number one is overridden, whenever your feature size is controlled by your position tolerance. Yeah? When the feature size is controlled by the position tolerance, you have your straightness, your orientation, uh, feature axis, your medium line, your center plane is controlled within the limits of the position tolerance. Yeah, Of course, uh, they're all related, uh, re related to your primary data because that's where we measure or verify from. And don't forget your tolerance, yeah, your tolerance of position has a significant influence or indirect control on the orientation of the features of Zeiss, okay? If you feel difficult to talk like features of Zeiss, just know that we're dealing with the Zeiss, you know, size of your features on the part. And don't forget, it's always related to your primary, okay? Primary datum. When you deal with your theoretical boundary, Theoretical boundary can be your axis or your uh, surface yeah, elements. Okay, that's cool. Now we'll get into tolerance of position requirements. Okay, so every time we use a position tolerance to locate yeah, the feature position on your part, you have to, they got to be applied to the feature of size, not the feature, features of size. And your basic dimensions, we use it you know, to locate, to establish your uh, absolute location or true you know, position. You already know where the true position is, where it's supposed to be. You know, I always say the true position of where it is supposed to be. And all other positions are a deviation from that true position. Okay? And they can, they can deviate you know, within the, uh, uh, your tolerance zone. Anyway, so that's uh, what we're talking about. Of course, your data and references are uh, always required. All right, then we'll get into position tolerances at MMC. Yeah? So we're repeating the same thing. And I found like a lot of the students have the issue understanding the virtual condition. Yeah? So we can go very, very slow. So if you have like a size feature and you're going to produce at the maximum material condition, what does it mean? Your feature has the most material, yeah? At that time, um, for example, we call it that kind of situation a bed, yeah? So worst case. 
why is it the worst case? Because you are positioning at an extreme, yeah, Ex extreme or maximum limits of that location tolerance, yeah. Because if you have like the most material on the part, you have the the least, yeah. Your feature is uh, your feature location is kind of really really off, yeah. Then that's our VC. So for that reason, what do we do? Position tolerances for Zeit features, yeah, uh, that must be assembled, meaning like we're assembling our stuff, yeah. They they are most often applied at your MMC. Because uh, why, yeah, sometimes the students feel like why are we using the worst case, you know, for assembly by doing the max, you know, max, uh, max it up. Um, it's because if you if you if you consider the error to its to its maximum yeah possible yeah uh, uh, extend your your you you are already yeah thinking about the worst thing that can ever happen to your part in manufacturing which is actually better than only considering the least yeah uh, uh, the least possible error yeah. So if you can think about what is the worst thing that can ever happen to the part when, when I manufacture, whatever mistake you will be having cannot go over that worst maximum mistake, okay? So that is what we're talking about. So uh, some of the students, I don't know why, like they use a, a, a long time going back and forth trying to understand this uh, max, yeah, this, uh, this uh, yes, uh, issue right there. It's just like you gotta take it as simple as possible. If you if you think all around three hundred sixty degree around, that's your probability when you study. Yeah, you know, statistic is really important in doing everything that whatever we do, because the more you think what can happen, many different possibility, the more you can protect. Yeah, you know? uh, the same thing in manufacturing. The more you can think, you know what can happen, the maximum possible error. And you include that in your thinking, yeah. And your project is always be protected because you can never make any mistake more than that. <laughs> so that is, that is the the smart <laughs> the smartness of, of, of uh, the engineering principle is that okay. We include the worst case scenario. You always have to think about the worst case scenario. So project, right? Project management. When you're planning, you have to think about what is the worst thing I could ever be able to face by doing this. You need to have a method to remedy for that. Okay. And in your life, the same thing. Uh, students, you know, you gotta think about. Oh, I'm gonna do this. What What is gonna happen? The worst case scenario. You gotta back that up. Yeah. So even if you you go wrong or whatever in your plan you will be covered because you have a method to compensate that error, yeah? So that's a very important uh, to understand, especially of course in position tolerances because you can't like calculate again and again. You're going to calculate one time and you're going to do it right, yeah, for the first time. And if you are smart enough, you've got to think about the worst case scenario. Okay, so when we apply the position yeah, tolerance at MMC, so your tolerance for the size features location, you can increase, of course, yeah, in a direct proportion to the amount of the actual feature has got to depart, right, from that maximum material condition. Again, don't worry about how it write, yes, uh, you can write it in your own way. Max condition meaning like you have the most material on your part, so your feature has the least possible yeah, diameter if you're dealing with the hole, yeah, uh, the least possible dimension. And of course, that's going to be uh, in direct proportion to that you know, actual feature or not. Okay. Now, true position, in this case, we're still dealing with the hole. So you have your two plane, uh, you're going to cross right at that you know, uh, center right here for that hole. Then we're going to come in and we're going to define this uh, towering zone yeah? when hole size is your smallest. Meaning like the material is the largest, yeah. Now you should be able to understand it by now, yeah. Again and again, your whole size is the smaller material is as if max because it said it so. I am at MMC, meaning like ma maximum material. My condition of the part, the condition of your part, 
is you've got the most material on that part. So therefore your feature, which is a hole, has the smallest diameter. Yeah? So the tolerance of the axis of the hole when the hole is at a small size is applied yeah, at MMC. So now we come into the hole size at MMC, maximum axis offset here. And then you have your true position and then your tolerance zone when hole size is the smallest. Yeah? So now your center, look at that. Yeah? So this little blue is the center of that yeah, hole size. And this little uh, white one yeah, is the center of your tolerance zone. Yeah? So now we're going to move around to your bonus yeah, tolerance. We're going to add that in order to uh, compensate the error. Yeah? So we're going to start departing from that MMC. Yeah? So towards your LMC, so LMC has the largest, yeah, uh, the biggest, the biggest uh, uh, diameter of your of your uh, hole. So we're gonna depart from that, going towards your bonus tolerance right there. So the position of your tolerance zone is gonna increase by an equal amount, yeah, uh, given to you as your tolerance, and then the additional amount we call that for the uh, bonus tolerance. Why do we need the additional tolerance? Just to cover the maximum error, yeah? Okay, so here is your actual hole size, and here is your bonus tolerance, and here is your tolerance zone, okay? Uh, but remember, the white one is a tolerance zone, and your diameter is the smallest, yeah? And then here is your, your true position where the hose should be, yeah? And then uh, this one is, look at this little, yeah, that's your bonus tolerance. So we're locating, yeah, the hole uh, at MMC. So when you assemble, sometimes we're going to go off, yeah, off and off. So the worst case scenario is represented when your Zeiss feature MMC is around your true position, yeah, you know, right there. And this is our actual hole size that you can see on your part, okay? And this is our zones, yeah? So this is your hole size, your MMC, your maximum excess offset, meaning like this true, yeah? Uh, actual hole size can go down like that. Again, if I have to simplify that, our golden statement, make sure your surfaces of your part got to be within the tolerance zone, given tolerance zone, okay? And we're dealing with uh, the material condition of your part, okay? So sometimes it's really difficult. I want you to go slow, you know, if you go slow, uh, you're okay. So let's stop the part one right here, and we're gonna come in uh, the part two.